Hi, in this video we will continue where we left off in the last video, namely the discussion of how to organize data in the central broker inside our event-driven architecture. If you are not familiar with an event-driven architecture and the role of message brokers in that architecture, I would really recommend to rewatch the previous video that will be linked below. Moving on, so we have producers that, pu that publish data and consumers that subscribe data. But how do we really store the data inside the message broker in such a way that it makes sense both for machines and for humans? This means it has to be easily found and retrieved. In the past, often IT professionals used to store data in big relational databases um, with lots of tables and columns. The problem is that OT engineers often got lost. They prefer to think in manufacturing terms of having a certain production area with a production line and work cell where they can find their tags. So instead of relying on relational database structures, we want to organize our data in a so-called semantic hierarchy. And a semantic hierarchy is just a fancy way of saying in a structure that is easily understood by humans without having to read a bunch of documentation, if you're experienced with manufacturing. So we're going to rely on an industrial specification to tell us how to organize data in a unified namespace to hopefully have a relatively wide adopted standard across the world. To give you an example, the, you know, the UMH stack, as well as most implementations of the unified namespace, will rely on the ISA 95 part two specification that can be found and purchased online. It's not the only specification that could be used. For example, in Germany, the KKS or Kraftwerk Kennzeichen system is a typical specification used in the power sector. But for the unified namespace, mostly we will rely on the ISA 95 standard. And in a nutshell, it means that we organize our MQTT topics that hold our messages in an hierarchy starting from the enterprise name down to a particular site, so factory location. In that factory, we have a certain area where things are produced. Either it can be batch production, continuous production or discrete manufacturing, in which case we will call the next level of the hierarchy a process cell, production unit or production line respectively to finally end in either a unit or a work cell. This allows an OT engineer or really anyone which has knowledge of the plant to easily find a particular tag of a given work cell or machine. So this is all very theoretical. How would this look like in practice? And for this, I will rely on the management console provided by the United Manufacturing Hub. There you see that we have the hierarchy visualized in the column on the left, where we have a demo microchip enterprise that has a location in Cologne, where we are currently looking at the vaccine packaging area um, down to the packaging line two, in which we have a work cell with a tag called WS underscore mode that is shown in real time. Now, if you're familiar with this particular enterprise and you're looking for this tag, you would be able to navigate the different hierarchies or the different levels of this semantic hierarchy. And that's really all there is to it. To recap, we want data to be easily found by both IT and OT professionals. For this reason, we're gonna organize it into a semantic hierarchy and to have a hierarchy which is, let's say, often found or widespread adopted across the world, we are going to use an industrial standard. There's multiple standards going from the KKS in German power sector, but most often we will really rely on the ISA 95 part two standard. If you want to know more about this topic, I would really recommend to read the chapter two um, of this article, which I will link in the video below. Thanks for watching.